difference. But so they rented it for a, for, for a little while. And then, then they sold that one, and then we moved in here, obviously. Right. Okay, questions? Que do you, what do you remember, like, major life things that you remember during your life? I mean, I have memories that I remember that were major. Well, the one that comes to, to, to mind the most was when I was in the third grade. Okay. Growing up, I always had a big muscle in my right bicep. Big. Just just on the right? Mm -hmm. Just on the right. It was, I could make a muscle like you couldn't believe. And it never hurt. Never, nobody ever said anything. It was just, just, it was just bigger than the left. Uh -huh. And I would do all sorts of things. I'd run to and jump fences and yeah. the whole the whole works, you know, not doing anything about it. But then when I was in the third grade, my teacher was Miss Pickle. Obviously, strangely enough, <laughs> to remember that. Some some said it was Pickle, but I call it Pickle. Pickle. And they decided, Mom and Dad did, that we better have that looked at. Your arm. My arm. So they took me up to a, a, a specialist, Dr. Seavey, I remember strange things you remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, he says, "Yes, you've got a tumor." Oh. In on in that arm. And if, what do you call it, a ganglion tumor, mm -hmm. something like that? He says all of the blood vessels and everything just to run through that. Run through it. And if you would have punctured that, you would have bled to death in two minutes. Oh no! Terrible. And says, "Well, we better get it taken care of." So that's the first really big thing I remember is having that operated on. No complications. Does it make your arm tiny? It still is. Oh, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but, but it worked out just fine. They got the tumor out. They got the you tumor. healed up. It was not malignant. It was oh, just, good. just a benign tumor. And how did they separate it from all of the vessels and stuff? It took them a long time. Yeah, I bet. Wow. Big surgery. Big surgery. I have a big scar from there to there. Um, but I have seen your scar, but I never knew what it was from. What it's from? Yeah. So when I was in the th yeah, probably fourth or fifth grade, um, I wanted to beat Tori in an arm wrestle. So I started lifting weights, but dumb old me, I started lifting them on just the one just arm. Just one arm. Because so, that's the one you were Yeah. So the, the right arm was a full inch bigger than the other one. So when you said that your arm was bigger, I was... That, and I think I beat him once, but Tori was always stronger and faster and better at everything. It's kind of funny. So that's that's probably the first big... Well, you, were, you told me that you remember falling out of the truck and putting your teeth through your... Oh, no. We skipped right over that part, didn't we? Yeah. You were littler then. You fell out of the back of a littler pickup? Than third grade, right? Uh, I, no, no, no. I was small. I don't remember yeah. that. Yeah, I just remember were... the story. Yeah, you were small. When we moved from Wendover back into Salt Lake, Dad was driving the dump truck, and Mom was driving the 1927 Nash with the other kids in it. Mm -hmm. And You didn't put people in the dump truck? In the back? I had, no, we didn't. Oh. Call anybody in the back. Oh. I had one brother, I think it was Bud, and, and Dad and I were in the cab of the dump truck. But we were tooling down the road between Wendover and Grantsville, and somehow, whether I did it or Bud did it, I don't know, but somebody opened the door. Oh. And I went out. Like, were you going 30 or 40? Or? I, you don't know? It Too didn't little. kill me, so probably not about that fast. Oh, right, right. But gosh. That top speed on that 27 Nash was about 40 miles an hour. Oh, okay, okay. So I sure Dad wasn't pushing the truck. <laughs> and I put my teeth through my lip. Through the right? lip. I have, there's, there's still a scar there. But I don't remember that. I I, yeah, you were little. Hmm. And it was right after that that we moved into the tent. Oh, Okay. Yeah. Grandma had a, a, a stove in the tent, right? The tent was a an old military tent. It was uh, 12 feet long by, 
32 feet wide. Uh -huh. And on the one end of it, it was canvas, heavy canvas. But on one, one end was a, a metal grommet that went through the canvas and the stove pot, the pot belly stove sat on mm -hmm. that end of the tent. And the flu went up and up through the Well, you lived grommet. there during the winter. Uh, no. No? I'm, I'm trying to remember that she used to cook on it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't remember it being winter. But, and you used the neighbor's water and the, mm -hmm. and you had an outhouse. So your grandma said you had. Well, she said we had an outhouse and we had, had an outhouse. Well, I don't know where you'd use the you bathroom. You probably weren't potty trained yet. <laughs> <laughs> there were no service stations we could run over there and. And, and use like there are now. But anyway, yes. Oh, well, that tent would fit in right nowadays. <laughs> Just another tent. <laughs> so, Dad kept that tent for years. Yeah. He hauled it from one house to another. So do you know why you decided to move like from there into From the Wendover tent? into Salt Lake? Uh-huh, well, and live in the tent. Work ran work. out. Oh. No. Yeah, work ran out in Wendover. And then you just didn't, you didn't have anywhere to rent or you didn't have the money to rent? Probably about, there's not, not, Wendover back then was nothing. There were no casinos or anything in Wendover. It was just a service station. Right. Oh. So when you got here, where, where did he work when you got here? Where did dad work? Yeah. yeah. He did a lot of things. He was a fry cook at D's downtown Salt Lake. Mm. Uh, he worked there for a while, and then he got a job with American Oil, American Oil Refinery, and he worked in the refinery to start off with, and then got on driving trucks, tankers, and he drove those till he retired. Oh, okay. And it was American Oil, and then it changed. Grandpa smoked, didn't he? Yeah, when he was younger, Grandpa did. When did he stop smoking? Uh, he picked up smoking when he was in the service. What military service was Army. It? Army? He was in the Army. And he picked up smoking, got out of the Army, and then got married. And they decided that they were going to go over to uh, the Uinta Basin and homestead. Okay. And uh, That's, They were in their 20s or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. And Max, Dad's father, had also been over there homesteading. So they went over to Red Cap, and you could just claim property. Just boom. Yeah, hmm. just boom. It was, it was all free and clear. You just registered it. Hmm. So they registered a piece of property on what was then called Red Cap. It was by a creek. And... They built a log house. And at that time, they had, Lloyd was there, Bud was there. I think Ray was born there. I think they're the three kids that they had over in, in Uinta County. Hmm. And one, day, one night, they were just there at home, and the bishopric came over. Dad was not active at all. He smoked. Uh, was Max and his wife active? They had gone back to Twilla. Oh. Max was never what you would really call an active church member. Mm -hmm. Nellie, on the other hand, was just the opposite. Mm. Very active? Very active. Oh. Uh, Nellie was almost as a part of being pious. <laughs> so they had some conflicts that way. <laughs> So the bishopric showed up and the bishopric showed up one night and says we've been been inspired to call you to be the Sunday school superintendent. And Dad says I can't do that. I don't go to church. <laughs> I smoke. I can't do that. And they says well, the Lord wants you to do it. So Dad took his cigarettes and threw them in the fire in the fireplace. And that was and it. Never huh? picked up enough. Cigarette again. Wow, that's amazing. Started going to church. Wow. And how did Grandma feel about that? She had mixed emotions because she loved her tea. 
Mm. Oh, did she stop drinking tea too? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> she never stopped drinking tea. And it was tea, it wasn't coffee. It, yeah, she never, she didn't like coffee. Coffee, no. But she liked, she liked her tea. Tea. Uh -huh. And if that's the worst she ever did, oh gosh, <laughs> I'm sure she'll be just fine. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So anyway, that's the story of how. Well, he stopped smoking. Now, wasn't Ray the one where Grandpa was working somewhere out of town, and he had to hop the train to get home for Ray? Wasn't that Ray's birth? Uh, yeah, he was. He was over in in Uinta County. At the and time, where, and where was and Grandma? Too, gr Grandma was living in Salt Lake. Oh, okay. And when when Ray was born, and he hopped the freight train to get here to get back. Yeah, because when they went out there, they went out in wagons. Oh my gosh, mm. I can't even imagine that. In you know, horse-drawn wagons. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. While they were out there. Dad and his brother, I can't remember which one it is, I think it was John, took the horse, horse team of horses up the canyon, split logs, they were building something, and piled them on the wagon and on the way back, somehow they broke loose and fell on John. Oh no. And it hurt him pretty bad. Really bad. And so Dad put him off the side and rushed down and got some help to come up. And, mm -hmm. and he recovered fine, John did. But Dad Still. carried that to the last days because he blamed himself <gasps> for that accident happening. I went out on an accident in West Valley a couple of years ago where a, a slab of granite for a granite countertop, uh -huh. a big one, a big one, fell over on a guy, killed him. Just they're heavy. They're yeah, really, they're really heavy. heavy. Yeah. You, you know that you just have yeah, them put in just, your house. We put one in a couple years ago, and we it was about six guys, seven guys. Oh yeah. They were all, a... and they were straining, and we thought they were going to break it. We thought they were going to stop and break scary. it, but they didn't. They got it down there. Yeah. But yeah, it, they are heavy. So now, which one was it that your dad didn't make the birth to? Your mother went to the hospital and he yeah, was Yeah, which one was it? He didn't make it back. Was she upset? <laughs> I don't know. Good question. Well, back sure then, the she guys... She understood. Back then, the guy, it wasn't like it The guys couldn't go in anyway. They couldn't go in, couldn't go in anyway, yeah. yeah. I mean, Even when our girls were born, they wouldn't let me go in. Oh, no? Yeah, and I was right there, right in the middle of everything. Yeah, they wouldn't let us go in. We had to wait out in the waiting room. Mm. Yeah. I don't remember which... Which one it was? Because I know they didn't. They say your mother made bread before she went to the hospital. Yeah, I think that was. I think it was and, Jane. And it was raisin from the uh, the table. Oh, and she, she just left, right? Yeah, she she left. She's like, I, I'm, I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh, Bishop's wife. Uh oh. <laughs> Wonder if we should be recording this or not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other questions? Well, you got some memories, and you ran track in high school. Okay. When I when I got it into high school, I I always ran. I never walked anywhere. Anywhere. I ran. Wow. I ran to school, even over Jackson. Yeah. I would run to school, babysit, uh, for. Uh, Ray and Bob, mm -hmm. and they they were up ninth south ninth east area. You'd run up there. Well, no, that I would babysit for them, and they would come home at night, and Bob would give me money to get home on. I'd run home. Oh, he'd give you money to go home in the bus. Yes, and I'd like to come <laughs> home. I I just like to run. Yeah. So anyway, I got to West. I never had any training except I just ran. Yeah. And uh, my friend, one of my friends, Blan, said, let's run cross country, which was taking place in about two weeks. 
the, the, the auditions or what do you call it? The tryouts? Yeah. No, the actual race. Oh, the race. <laughs> you hadn't trained. You hadn't trained. No. <laughs> and I said, oh, uh, okay. And it says, they do have a sophomore division, so you can run in the sophomore division. And all right. I, so you just shows up. You just showed up. So we talked to the track coach. And he says, if you want to run, that's fine. Go ahead and run. <laughs> he gave us, they gave us a uniform. So we had a West High uniform. Wow. And we went down to Liberty Park where it was held. And uh, we ran cross country. And I placed second. Wow. And there, there were probably 50 participants in it. From lots of different schools. Yes, from all over. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was a state meet. Wow. Oh, you went straight to the state meet, huh? Went right straight to the state You're on the meet. stage. What did the coach say when you won second? Well, he was going to make me a miler. A what? A miler. miler. Run the mile. Yeah. Oh, oh, miler. My, a a mile. mile. Yeah, yeah. He's going to make me a miler. And that one was, uh, how far was the one you ran? Uh, about 1.3 miles. Oh, okay. It wasn't a real long cross country. Right, right. So, uh, we get into the track season, into the winter now fall left and we went into the winter and back then well they probably still do west high school has what they call a dirt room a dirt what dirt room okay underneath the uh, physical education building okay it, it's just dirt yeah and you had probably a, about a 60 me or 60 yard long area that 20 yards wide mm-hmm and that's where we'd run. We'd go down there and run. So Tolstrup, the coach, says, all right, we're going to run races there and back. And it, it was under there because, because it was cold outside. It was cold outside. Yeah. You couldn't run in the snow. Right, right. Yeah. So we were. he says, we're going to run these elimination races. So he starts us running. And We'd line up, I don't remember how many, five, six, across. And then run down to the end, run back. Mm -hmm. And the winner stayed in. The losers left. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Out. Oh, they didn't do like this group, then this group, then the winners of those groups. That's what would be fair. <laughs> You'd tie her out these yeah. other guys. So anyway, when it came down to, I was in the last group. And I won. I was the first finisher. Yeah. And he says, can't make you a miler. No, we need sprinters. So now you're going to become a sprinter. Sprinter. So I became a sprinter. For the 400 dash and most things? Yeah, 100 and the two, oh. 220. Oh, oh, okay. I hated the 440. <laughs> it was just too long. Because it was too long to sprint. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because it is a full out sprint. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. hard. I could run it, and I did occasionally, but not in competition. Yeah. So that was my track experience. Mich my daughter Michelle was in track at West, and I have some really cool pictures of her. I don't think she liked her dad showing up to her <laughs> track meets, but. Well, in those days, I was five foot nine and weighed one hundred and twenty-five pounds. Oh wow! And you did it like all throughout your all your years, sophomore, junior, senior. Uh -huh. I ran, ran, ran track, track all three years. My very best outing was at Weber High School. Mm -hmm. And that made I tied the state record 9.8 seconds wow. for the 100 yards. That's cool. And I was doing really well that year. And that was the year that I uh, got mobbed by a bunch of Hispanic guys. Oh no! Broke my jaw. Why did they? You why didn't, you didn't hear about that one? Nah, I probably heard, but I don't remember it. So why in the world did I, they do that? Because I was there. Just because you were there. I was. I was coming home, and it was it was late at night. I don't remember where I'd been. Coming home from a track meet, or com no, just no. coming home. Period. And you were just there. I was on Main Street or on Marion Street, and yeah. I was driving. You were driving. I was driving, and and I'm. On that little street, you didn't drive very fast. You just right. Yeah. So I was just driving there, and all of a sudden there were a bunch of guys in front of me, and I had to stop. Oh. And they pulled me out of the car. They take your car? 
No, they didn't take the car. They just, they just wanted up. to beat you up. Just beat me up. Senseless. And it broke my jaw, and that took care of my track for that year. And I never was into it as much as, as I fast. had been. Yeah. Oh, gosh. And didn't you hurdle at some point? Just messing around. Oh. Yeah, Michelle did the same thing, just messing around, hurdling. I've got a really nice scar right along there. From Thanks to a hurdle. From a hurdle. <laughs> yeah. Well, you get painted toenails. I do not. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're having a recording. That Lori's toenails are painted. This one got smushed, and it it was looking really ugly, so I painted them. Well, Michelle, I took Michelle to get a pedicure, and and I did mine too. And she said. Poppy, let's get our nails painted green because it was March. Oh, yeah. So we both did. <laughs> and I just forgot about it until I got to karate and took my shoes off. <laughs> <laughs> I had green toenails. But, but. So then uh, while I was in high school, I met Lorraine. Uh, I, one of my best friends was Warren Sutton. We ran together all the time. And his brother was the manager of the Lyric Theater. So we could wander in and out of the theater whenever we wanted. Was this a, a, a theater with movies or with... Just a movie theater. Oh, okay. A movie theater. It's down on State Street. Mm -hmm. And Is in it its earlier there? days, it had been plays. Oh, yeah. But they converted to, a, to, movies. to movies. Is it still there? I don't think so. I think that's, so I finally tore it down. But uh, we went in there one night. Somebody said, <clears throat> there's a really nice, a, a cute usherette. They had usherettes, usherettes. <laughs> in, in those days. In the night, in their cute little uniforms. Yeah, yeah. Long pants, not shorts. Yeah. And you had to go meet her. So we went in there to meet this cute usherette. And her name was Gail. This usherette. And Gail wasn't working that night. But her sister was. And her sister was Lorraine. Lorraine. <laughs> so from that point on, we were kind of together. You both went to the same school? At different times. Oh, okay. Yeah, Lyle well, graduated the spring before I started West. Oh, okay. So were okay. you not at West yet? And you were still at West when you met? No, no, I was at West. She was at West. Oh, and you were. I was out. He was out. Okay. Yeah. So you're like five years different, something like that. No, uh, three, three and, and a half. half. Oh, three and a half. And so, when did you go into the army? Immediately out of high school. Right after you met mom. Oh no, it was before. No, it was met before. Me. Oh, uh, oh. So when you got back, you met her. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Okay. It was around Christmas time when I met Lyle. I remember that because mm -hmm. we went to. A Christmas party where you were. Yeah, that was. Mm -hmm. I I worked at uh, Maycock. Maycock. Maycock uh, dining room. That's not what they called yeah. it. Well, it was a department store, but it had a had a tea. Yeah. A dining a, a room. Yeah. In it. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and this was a high end department store, and they had nice parties. Yeah. Mm. And so that was our first date. Your first date. Yeah. <laughs> what What did you do in the army? How'd you cook? Oh, that's good. My friend Wesley was a cook in the army with me. He chopped his finger off. I was, uh, I was, was, was <laughs> army reserve, not active army. Yeah. I spent eight months active mm -hmm. uh, at Fort Ord, California. I've been to Fort Ord too. And while I was there, uh, we had been out on bivouac. You know what bivouac is? Oh, yeah. Okay, I thought you probably would. Give me PTSD thinking about it. <laughs> and and uh, they were bringing the field ranges in to clean them. Mm -hmm. And I was slice, I had a potato, potato slicer. It was a big machine with a blade that just went round and round and just fed the potatoes in it. And I was f doing potatoes, and these two KPs started bringing the field range right smack in the middle of the, the kitchen. So I turned around to tell him to take it outside, oh. and my finger went into them. And it took about a half inch off. Yeah, there you go, about a half inch off. Yeah. 
and that extended my stay for a while <laughs> in, in that Fort Ord. Someone got an extra special potato that day. No, my finger came out. Oh. <laughs> I, I the potatoes. <laughs> oh, you found the piece? Yeah, they found a piece, but it wasn't big enough to, to put it back on. Yeah, I can imagine. What they did is took off layers of skin. Oh, they did? From my upper arm. And attached it. And attached it. That's good. For padding over the bone. Yeah. And it really doesn't give me problems. It hasn't. So you're not a clarinet it's, player or anything? So. No, it's tender. I mean, you, you, still tender. Yeah, it always is. Yeah. Yeah. How old are you now? I'm eighty-five. Eighty-five. I'll be eighty-six in October. You know, President Wilson's going to be hundred this year yeah. on my anniversary. <laughs> oh, is it right? On yeah, his birthday is our anniversary. Nine-nine. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. But every time we see him, he just like walks out, spry and. Then you've got the seventy-year-olds that are going really slow. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't looking quite as good at conference this year. Oh, awesome. Well, when you foul up your hips, it oh, kind of slows yeah. you down. Elder Irene came to talk to us, all the chaplains, and he um, he's not quite as sharp as he used to be. He so he's getting older too. Uh -huh. I mean, I can't say much about because I have brain farts too. But he <laughs> he would just. He came out and he said, I'm not going to give the talk that I had prepared. He says, it was a really good talk. And so it was really interesting. And then he just started talking to us. And he talked to us about his military service. Very, very interesting. And um, how he he was in the military. And then later the church called him and said they wanted him to to run Rich, Rick's College. And when he moved out there, he didn't even know where Rick's College was. <laughs> he moved out there. They put him in a in a trailer it was a trailer like a small trailer it wasn't a house mm -hmm. and so he, he he was really good talk when he talked to us but um, yeah we get to the privilege of having right uh, one or two apostles come and talk to us every october well, and, that's, that's nice and this year we'll have after conference we have monday tuesday and wednesday training with with the church and they'll bring catholic priests in or they'll bring Chaplains of the army, you know, there there are other religions in too mm -hmm. for the training, but the church has three hundred and fifty chaplains now. There might be three sixty now, but um, fifty four of them are women, and women can now do marriages, and they can now do funerals. Really? So, yeah, very, wow. and that's a change that most people don't know about with chaplains. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tell us about the skyhook. We gotta hear the skyhook story. That was my oh. favorite story when I was little. <laughs> <laughs> in in our basic training company, we had a fellow by the name of Donovan. Donovan was very different. He was he had a very large head to begin with. I mean that's just a physical characteristic, but he didn't have much inside the head. Mm. Very, very slow. How he ever made it into the service to begin with, I don't know. But Donovan, you could tell him anything, and he would believe you. Oh. He, he, on one occasion, we had just come in from bivouac, and so everything was dirty and so forth, and we were all up picking up cigarette butts and policing the area, as they called it. Mm -hmm. And... Donovan was there, and an officer came by. Well, Donovan didn't salute the officer. And he got really upset, the officer did. And so he put him on special duties in the, in the kitchen. So now he was a, almost a permanent kitchen KP. And uh, one day, Tell you Donovan's mental acuity. One day he was in the kitchen and he was stirring gravy with a ladle. Mm -hmm. And I guess he's still remembering that you're supposed to salute officers. Because an officer came in the kitchen and he saluted with that ladle. <laughs> oh. Gravy all, in, all down. <laughs> oh, poor kid. And uh, we shouldn't have done it, but. 
we decided that we would put one past Donovan. So we wanted to play volleyball, but we didn't have a volleyball space where we could attach the nets. We could put it on the building over here, but there was no post or anything over here. So we told Donovan to go over and requisition a sky hook. Sky hook. <laughs> and he went all around trying to find trying one. to find a sky hook. And one uh, one person would just lead him on oh, and send him sad. somewhere else. Poor guy. I feel so bad about that. <laughs> mm. But he came back and finally told us that he could not find a sky hook on him. <sighs> so we told him it was okay. Oh, you didn't tell him it was a joke. No. Oh, okay, that's probably a good thing. Wow. Well, no, that's the sky hook story. So, what are Michelle and Kathy doing? They're fine. Every right at this moment, I don't know. If we call them no, but I mean, family-wise, <laughs> what's going on? Are they're fine um, and they're healthy? And yeah, Kathy's got somebody living with her. Uh, yeah, Michael. Michael. Yeah, her husband's son. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, um, but that's just a normal course of what happens. <laughs> you have kids come back and live with you. Yeah, yeah. And Michelle and Paul's, all their kids are scattered to the scattered. Land, not in the state. Wow. They're having grandkids. Yeah, they just got word that there's two, two new grandchildren on their way. Wow. Well, that's cool. And they have already one, two, three, four, five, seven. They have seven. So this will be nine. That's awesome. So that's, that's cool. And that's how many grandkids do you have? 28. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. <laughs> we only have five. We never see them. You never see them? Well, once in a while, but I mean, Kanisha will bring them down once in a while from Idaho, and Tori brings the kids over. Just, we'll go do something fun when they come. Yeah. Yeah, yeah grandkids are fun. We, all of ours live in Utah. So. Yeah, we went to one of the baptism. Yeah, mm -hmm. yesterday. Grandchildren baptisms yesterday. Brooklyn. Yep. I guess it's got to be hard to keep. How many grandkids and great grandkids do you have? Yeah, 20 grandchildren. 21 grandchildren. 21 grandchildren, and I don't know, 40 some odd. Great. <laughs> I'm trying to think. You guys, we, we have, have, have. We have 28. And Michelle has. Seven. And Michelle has seven. seven. Well, you can count nine now. Oh, <laughs> yeah, with the two on the way, right? <laughs> and then uh, Kathy has one, two, three, four. Well, that's 42. cool. Yeah. Or 52. 42. 42 without. So 42? With or without the unborn. 7 is 35. That's with the unborn. Five. With the unborn. Yeah. Oh, 42. 40, yeah. Well, I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah. 40, 40 living and 2 unborn. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Yep. And how's Sandy? Fine. Well, she had a brain tumor taken out. And yeah, and is she... She's she's there. Yeah, she said I'm not doing exactly perfect, but she's she's much better than she was when she was in the hospital. I went and visit her, and they were gonna this young nurse. She looked like she's 15 to me. I'm sure she's 20. She came in to do a catheter, and I don't think the the nurse appreciated. But Sandy had to coach her and tell her everything. So I said I'm gonna go out in the hall. But <laughs> so Sandy was a nurse for 40 years and knows what she's doing and, and these young girls are it was funny it was just funny uh, and didn't you say she was um kind of grumpy sandy was grumpy for a while she's she's a lot better now That's good. i think it was a brain tumor yeah because augie said the same thing that she was just not herself well, in the hospital you said oh she yeah was she was a little little bit yeah, too but after she get but that's because of that so once it was all sure. gone uh she's doing much better oh good Dave still living down in Bitco? He's in Torrey. He's in Torrey. Okay. Yeah, and we haven't gone down to visit him, <laughs> like like ever. Like ever. Oh, okay. He, he's invited us down. There. Well, I haven't gone to see Sandy's twenty-eight acre. Yeah, in Colorado. In Colorado, twenty-eight or thirty-two acres, something like that. But it's a lot. It's a big, big place. Yeah. So, didn't you say David was thinking of moving up here? He was talking about it. But then he decided not to. They decided not to. Okay. So they had a they had a condo up here, mm. and then he's thinking of buying another one up here just in case he has health concerns, so he could come up where the hospital where the hospital is. Mm -hmm. is. 
So but he had something too. What did he have? He has macular degeneration. So he just can't he can't drive anymore. He could see, but he'll use the tablet and put it right up close. Okay, yeah. And so and he's on a, like a board of a city board, construction board where he helps people get permits and things. But, mm. So he's really active in the community down there. Was on the fire volunteer fire department. <laughs> he sent me a picture of him responding to the first fire that he went to in flip flops and the t shirt. And I'm, just, <laughs> I'm always talking about PPE gear and how you protect. And he got the fire out, but when the supervisors showed up, they weren't too happy with him being in flip flops. <laughs> That's David. Oh, that's um, well, I guess I'll stop this recording. You had enough. No more questions. Well, I don't know. That's. I'm sure there's Didn't more know. questions. There's always more questions. What, what, let's see. What were some of the things that you guys did as a family when you were young? Like, what did you do? 